It's um, I'm glad all of you can could make it. Um, today we have Nicole Lopez. Nicole is from Santiago, from Chile. Santiago is a, is a beautiful place. So Nicole, welcome. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you for having me today. Pleasure is ours. So today we'll see Nicole's artwork and um, she has, it's okay if you wanna ask her questions while she's painting. Is that correct, Nicole? Yeah, totally. Okay. Okay, and if you're on Facebook, um, we will, I'll ask uh, Anna and Mark and not Anna, but Mark, <laughs> <No>. Angela. <laughs> Angela, 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 Angela will be. Us. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. But if you're on uh, Zoom, you can ask your questions directly. So with that, hello, Nicole. Hello, John. <laughs> So I think we're going to look at your artwork first. Um, is that correct, Ethel? Yes, we have a PowerPoint ready for Nicole. Okay, we'll okay. do a share screen. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, John already introduced Nicole. Um, the next couple of slides uh, will be Nicole's social media handles. We want our guests, our friends here to follow Nicole. This is Nicole's Instagram account. It's Nicole. How do you pronounce the last four letters? Five letters. In Spanish, Nicole Italia. Nicole Italia. There you go. That was a beautiful. And then I got YouTube here first. Is that correct? Yeah, this is her Facebook account. Facebook page, yeah. Yeah, Nicole Italia illustration and her beautiful website. It's easy to remember because it has her name, basically. <laughs> and this is her YouTube account as well. Um, the next couple of slides, Nicole, uh, have your sample artworks and would appreciate if you can share a line or two uh, for each of these. We start with this one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that was an... Um, Iris flower. Yeah, this is one of my latest works. It is a study of the iris flower, and it was kind of hard to get the colors right. So uh, I wanted to give it a look of like uh, late afternoon or a sunset lining. And I really struggled with getting the, the right color for, for this. Um, but um, I think uh at the end it, it make it right so um i think i'm happy with the result but i also feel that in the end i overdid a little layering and i would have like it maintain a little more more transparency of the watercolor especially on the central petals but um i like so much the 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 detail in in this flower Ah, thank you, Angelica. Ah, this is um, a leaf. Uh, it's called Alocasia variegata. Uh, in this leaf, something I really enjoyed a lot is the granulation of the pigments. Um, it helped so much to get this great texture and capture all the different color of the Alocasia leaf. Um, also, it was interesting to mix the colors because I only use two different greens and one yellow. Uh, for example, I use sub green and deep sub green and, and a little blue coal for get the, the granulation uh, pigment. Uh, I think besides that, I really like to create all that movement in the surface on the on the leaf. Um, I think it was really uh, exciting played with lights and and shadow in in this in this leaf. Sorry, I cannot see the the images. I. It, it, I can only see the the view of your Facebook. 
Are, are, are everybody see. can see your your pictures? I, yes. Yeah, it's actually on on share screen now, Ingrid. I cannot see it. It, it didn't move. That's yeah. Thank you. I can see. <laughs> Carry on. Nicole. This <laughs> this one is called Requiem Requiem de Flores Requiem of, of Flowers. Uh, this was a much bigger size. It was like a 50 by 17 centimeters. I, I'm used to, to, to paint in little size, uh, but I'm not used to, to paint format that big, but it was a, a great experience. Uh, so uh, for example, the, the concept was to include 15 different flowers in one composition and also to combine wild species and cultivated species in one illustration and even a dry uh, dehydrated rose if you can see is it's a little it's, it's tiny and I imagine a composition that it's kind of a fantasy because it shows flowers next to each other that you would not be able to see in reality because they flower in different seasons during the, the years. So it was a, a, a little special for me to create this uh, fantasy, like a spring fantasy. It's beautiful. Thank you, Yoli. Angela, you. <laughs> I remember Angela with with this flower now. Um, this so is I love this <laughs> this. Um, uh, ¿Cómo se llama una um, uh, orchid? Orchid, exactly. I love this orchid. orchid. <laughs> Phalaenopsis orchids. Um, Beautiful. So the story behind this one is very special because uh, my grandmother gave me these orchids uh, to me as a Christmas gift and I really loved them and it was a very personal and important gift for me so I wanted to preserve the the perfect state of the flower in a painting so they look so beautiful for a while but then they are going to die eventually and also I don't have so many opportunities to paint fresh flowers uh, because they are expensive and a lot of species are not available in, in Chile. So uh, this was um, a great um, experience to, to paint uh, in fresh, not from a photography, uh, you know, with a, a fresh flower on, on one side. This uh, yes. this is a, a rose, uh, una rosa gallica. Um, this this one was a study I've made uh, based on a work by a French painter, uh, Jean Pierre Redout, I think. Um, he was a botanical illustrator, and I like to do studies like this one inspired by big botanical artists and baroque artists also because it helps me to explore new techniques and get out of my comfort zone it helps me to <laughs> Very <laughs> Okay, let's quickly check if the microphone is on and we'll just help mute it. Okay, we're good now. Yeah, you can hear me? Yeah. Carry yes. on. Thank okay. you. Oops. Your, um, your mic is on mute. Yeah. Okay. Your works are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Rajat. Yeah. Danielle, could you share with us what size you're painting most of these in? How, how uh, large? These are, 
20 and 13 centimeters. Uh, what it's called a cuadro, uh, the, the format, Angela? A4, an A4, 30 by 40. Thank A4 you, size. thank you, Angela. Yeah, okay. this is uh, como my normal size, <laughs> except for the big composition. In inches, oh, <laughs> in inches, inches, maybe John can calculate in inches. Uh, it would be two and a half centimeters. Uh, what's oof, about know. eleven Let's, by eight? It was eight by eleven. Yeah, eight twenty-seven by eleven sixty-nine. Somebody has said, yes, eight by eleven. Jet in general numbers. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, this is um, a frog, a uh, rana. Uh, this one is quite different to my usual work. So it actually was because of my patron students who wanted to paint this. Uh, but I never had done an amphibian before. So it was exciting to try something new, uh, like this little frog. Uh, after all, it was super fun to paint the different textures, like the kind of uh, wet skin. And also I had a great time defining the muscles and the bone structure of the frog because it's, it's so different with, with flowers. When, when you paint flower, you have the, the movement. And in this, case uh, from the frog is more similar to to paint a human figure so this is a little different to me but i enjoy it a lot um uh, nicole uh, somebody uh, sarah is asking if you're working on black paper no no, I always work on white paper and I do retouch uh, the, the, the background in Photoshop. So the, the original paint is in with white ba 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 background, sorry. Ah, okay. So you add the background, you don't paint the background then? In, in this case, no. Uh, I usually made with a wash, black black wash or black ink. Uh, but in this case, uh, I retouch on digital, the background. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's You're welcome. our last um, slide, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, I don't hear them. Those were very nice. Thank you, Jan. You're so welcome. <laughs> when you use ink for a background, how do you what instrument do you use to apply it? Um, I, I use uh, I apply the ink at the at the end uh, on on dry. It. <laughs> I don't use water. And... You use a brush or a pen? And a brush. A brush. With a brush, yeah, what with a, a big brush. A big brush, okay. A big, That's good yeah, enough. yeah. For for the surface, I use a, mm -hmm. a big brush, like I think okay. number ten. So Nicole, if you would like to start, I want to make sure that you have as much time as possible. Um, yeah, that'd be great. What 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 image or what are you going to be um, painting today? I'm going to change my views. I'm going to paint these grapes. I, I don't know if I have the time to paint all of these grapes, but I do my best effort. <laughs> I'm going to use cold press paper. And I'm going to use mostly wet on wet technique. Can you share the colors that you will be using, please? Yes. 
I have my notes here. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, I'm gonna use French Ultramarine and Kinecridone Rose on neutral tint. I'm gonna use these three colors for for the the lights for these blue lights and then for the red shadows i'm gonna use a uh, bordeaux i think um, a little of perilin marron and for the this shadow i'm gonna use moon glow mm. Yeah, I, I like uh, Moonglow because it's texture. So uh, you can appreciate, I hope you can appreciate the, the granulation. The granulation from this color, I think um, I love uh, that texture on, on fruit. Mm. Lovely. The, the first, I'm gonna mix these three colors. I'm gonna use a big, big brush. And Angela, if you can help me with this, <laughs> with Sorry. this uh, techniques aspect, um, yes. voy a hacer una primera mezcla de una consistencia muy con mucha agua para que quede muy transparente. Mm -hmm. uh, she will uh, the first layer. She will use a very transparent uh, wash. So the mixture will have a lot of water. Yeah, L like a tea wash. Yes, in this coffee, tea, milk, uh, uh, maybe explanations of the consistency mm -hmm. and transparency, this would be tea, right? The lightest wash. Yes. So I Are get you using this, ultramarine, ultramarine purple? and Kinacridone rose. Ah, Kinacridone Kina rose. I'm going to use French ultramarine for the granulation. Mm -hmm. And a little neutral tint. I, I want more, more blue and more water. Things. Do you prepare all the mixture that you think you are going to use? Uh, sorry, again, please. Uh, do you you do you mix enough so that you can paint with it for a while, or you keep uh, making the color? Yeah, I I need to do the the mix again and again sometimes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I will start with this gray because it's more lining. I'm going to use wet on wet technique. And I'm Noelia using... Mendes. <laughs> I know Sorry. Noelia Mendes. She says, hello, Nico, the best teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Noelia. Noelia, she's my, my student from Peru. Uh, great. Now, I, now I'm going to change my brush, uh, a little one. This is made special for details. So I'm gonna apply this color 
very lightning in in this area. Are you doing this thing from a, a reference picture or imagination? No, it's a reference picture. All right. Um, in Spanish, um, utilicé una referencia, pero la cambié mucho porque eran uvas negras. Entonces, también cambié mucho la. Fui haciendo un cambio en mi mente de, de color para hacer la uva púrpura. So, in her reference photo, she has changed a lot because the original was like a dark, very dark uh, grapes. But mm -hmm. uh, in her mind, she's uh, putting more of the purples in it. So she's, okay. in a way, she's imagining the color or changing it, adapting it. Great. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I okay. love the different colors of the grapes. You have red grapes, green grapes, uh, purple grapes. I think is um, a really nice subject to to study to study colors and and different uh, shades. And Anuradna is asking, uh, what brush are you using, please? I'm using a Casaneo. Two, Da Vinci. Uh, da Vinci, yes, and a rosemary co. Uh, from Anna Mason, the botanical illustrator, number one. It's very mm -hmm. very little, and it's like a, a <coughs> spotter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this type of brush for for control, uh, all the details. Yeah, I always use little brushes. But I think Giovanni uses even smaller. Even smaller? Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> He uses triple zero, double zero, zero zeros, big zeros. Sounds like a cat in the street. I am the in the say team, so <laughs> yes. So I will continue with this color and the different grapes. And I'm gonna keep the bright light um, on, in white. So for the second layer, I'm gonna use uh, Bordeaux. I love this color. Do you have to so wait until it dries? 
um, the weight of the paper, Angela? Uh, yes. Do you have to wait until the paper is dry to apply the new color? Um, <laughs> lo ideal es sí, pero um, muchas veces también trabajo cuando está en ese estado de está casi secándose. Igual mm -hmm. me permite controlar más el agua. Mm -hmm. Yes, ideally it should be dry, but uh, I also work yes. when uh, it's in this at this point of of dampness when or when when it's almost dry but not quite. So she controls humidity like this. Yes. This is a heavy paper, is 614. Very heavy. Yeah, very heavy, but... Um, me gusta mucho cómo se difumina el, la acuarela en, en este papel porque fluye de manera más lenta el, el color. Entonces, tengo más tiempo para poder trabajar. She likes this paper because um, it gives uh, the color takes longer to, to dry and she has more time to, to work. It helps her. Now this color is the Bordeaux, right? Yes. It's going to be my color base. Mm -hmm. This paper, what is it? Is it Arsh or is it, what brand is it? Arsh. Arsh. Mm -hmm. um. Which are the other brand of colors do you use apart from Daniel Smith? Um, which colors are my favorites? Uh, the brand I'm talking about. Like presently you are using all Daniel Smith colors, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I... which are the other brand do you use? Uh, I que si use as otra marca. Yeah, I use uh, also Schminke. Okay, Shumink. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, here there is an interesting question by Linda. She's asking, when you are drawing the image, are you drawing freehand or from a projection? Porque sabes que muchas veces se proyecta la imagen y uh -huh. se recibe. El, ¿Usas este sistema o lo copias a mano? No, mira, tengo un método <ríe> en que dibujo a mano sobre papel normal y luego lo paso a este papel vegetal. Y del papel vegetal hago la transferencia al, al papel de acuarela porque no me gusta borrar en el papel de, de acuarela. Entonces dibujo a mano alzado sobre un papel normal, luego lo paso al vegetal y luego al de acuarela. ¿Y cómo lo haces al de acuarela? ¿Como eh, poniendo como negro por debajo para que quede pintado? Solo marco las líneas por, por debajo, no, no pinto todo, solo marco el, el borde como, uh -huh. en, como un espejo y luego lo pongo encima y tengo que marcar nuevamente. Uh -huh. Eh, me gusta mucho ese sistema porque tengo que dibujar alrededor de cuatro veces el mismo modelo. Entonces cuando llega el momento de pintar, ya tengo mucho conocimiento sobre las líneas, sobre la, 
las áreas de sombra, entonces eso al momento de pintar me, me hace sentir con más libertad de movimiento, porque ya conozco muy bien el, el modelo. Yeah, sure. Uh, she does the drawing on a normal paper, as, as I understood, then she transfers the drawing on, um, uh, on, on this transparent paper, and then the, the drawing goes at the end uh, to the watercolor paper because she doesn't like having to erase. So she traces from this transparent paper to uh, the watercolor paper. And when she paints, when she is going to paint whatever element, she knows the shapes. She's drawn it three times already or three or four times. And she knows all the shapes so well that she it's very easy for her then to remember uh, where the shadows were and everything. Yes, Giovanni says this is a realistic approach to trace the drawing from a reference image. Yes. Sí, eh, es muy bueno porque, o sea, a mí me gusta mucho porque también te hace conectar muy íntimamente en la observación de, del modelo. Mm -hmm. This forces you to um, enhance the observation of the model, it helps you. Oh, sorry. So your Bordeaux is pure. You don't mix it with any other colors. Yeah, exactly. Um, Geraldine is asking, does she use graphite paper to transfer the tracing to the paper? I don't know mm -hmm. what graphite paper is. O sea, papel de grafito, no sé cuál es. Sí, es un papel de transferencia de grafito. Carbon And... paper. Mm -hmm. um... Sorry? It, it's carbon paper. You're taking ah. the transparent image, putting the carbon paper face down ah. against the paint, ah, the carbon. paper. And then tracing over the top. To, of what her image is on the transparent paper, ah. you know, through through that, and that's how it transfers basically the drawing yes. to the painting. I don't think she used that. ¿Tú usas papel carbón? No, no uso papel carbón, Ángela, porque no. eh, me gusta que las líneas queden muy suaves. Entonces, me ha pasado. Eh, puede ser que el papel carbón no siempre se puede borrar tan fácil. Creo que me gusta el, no, el she doesn't algo. use this carbon paper. What I believe it's she what used, we call vegetal paper. Vegetal uh, paper. I, Angela, I think she scratches with graphite the, the paper and, and puts the graphite on the top of the of the aquarelle. And when she traces it, it's actually the graphite, just like pencil goes on her aquarelle paper. That is a very um, simple way of, of doing it. So with graphite, you just scratch the whole, um, that transparent paper that she has the image, puts the, <laughs> the graphite on the aquarelle, and then it's as though you traced it with a pencil. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't use it. I thought so she doesn't. Uh, I don't use carbon paper. And she doesn't use carbon paper. I thought. Does not. No. This is not a carbon paper. That is. She puts graphite on the paper. It's just she pencil. Means, yes, yes, it's just pencil. Uh, what, yes. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, what she means. Uh, what Stella means is that you put um, like uh, you 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 with the pencil. 
you mark the back of your drawing yes. so when yes. you trace it on top then these these pencil marks uh, go to the watercolor paper is that right yes, yes that's right she right. showed that she showed on, on this paper that mm -hmm. she was tracing and there was scratched with pencil so that's uh -huh. exactly what what she does i think yes, oh, yes. Okay. She's, she's confirmed Yes. So she scribbles on the back of the paper and, and with a pencil and then traces it on the front. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's a very old fashioned yeah. technique. <laughs> I, it goes back to uh, 50 years when I was learning how to do <laughs> art. My teachers taught that method. There was no graphite paper. But I, I love that method. I think you can connect uh, in a different level uh, with the with the subject. I tell you uh -huh. something. It goes back even further than that. I'm a little old lady, <laughs> and we used a toilet paper at school, which was called Bronco, and it was a brown paper and scratchy. But it was very good for doing maps for the geography maps, you know, scribble on the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. Child, children still use that. That is really children a very old-fashioned way. It's uh -huh. cheaper and also it doesn't it doesn't you don't smudge as much as graphite. Yeah. Exactly. I think Giovanni also uses this method sometimes. Yes, he does always this method. Ah, uh, okay. He 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 used the five B lead pencil on the back of the reference image, and he he does a, a black layer, and then he transfer on the, <coughs> on the white paper and using yeah. the front and trace uh, with the tracing page. exactly. Uh huh. So now we, we have discovered that what was uh, good 50 years ago is also very good now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's an ancient method from the Renaissance. Mm, so very much older. From Raphael and Michelangelo. You see, the masters. Yes. Good show. Mm -hmm. In the same conversation, you can also make your own graphite paper instead of color back of the paper you're drawing on. You can actually make a separate piece of paper with your own graphite, and then there's no wax added or no ink added. That's what I've done is to make your own graphite paper for copying. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Facebook, many uh, participants say that they use the same method. So we are a big group. <laughs> yes. Entonces ahora con bueno lo que he estado haciendo es que voy bordeando las zonas de brillo con el tono bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Aquí dejo también que la, la mancha fluya. No importa si no es completamente correcta con la referencia. Yeah, she's letting the, the, the color spread, uh, even if it's not exactly the same as the reference. And she's painting around the light areas with the bordo.
Sí, luego uso mi pincel más grande, eh, muchas veces lo aplano con los dedos, lo abro y voy difuminando. Creo que queda como más smoothie, como... When sometimes she uses her bigger brush and uh, flattens it and opens it up so it, it, it gets smoother. So she runs it on the, on the paint to smoothen the, the layers. Normally, how much time do you take to complete an A4 size painting? Oh, uh, it depends on the sides, but I think at least eight hours. Eight. So you and okay, eight. that's good. That's yes, good. I think at least eight hours on the this size, but mm -hmm. with all all the de with all the details. Uh, Josie is asking how much thicker is the Bordeaux second wash to the tea wash of the first layer? Uh, so much thicker. I think it's um, I always say to my student the consistency is like a nail polish. <laughs> oh. So would it be it's thicker than milk? Definitely thicker than milk, no? Yeah, definitely thicker than milk, like, like a cream. Cream. So now I'm going to do the first layer of the other grapes. Mm -hmm. May from Chile is sending kisses. Oh, thank you. <laughs> kisses back and thank you all of you for being here today, painting with me. Mm. Barbara would like to know if the Casaneo brush is a mop style mm -hmm. or a round yeah. brush. It's a mop. I think this is the only mop brush that I have. <laughs> but it's perfect to wet and wet techniques. Macarena is sending regards from Chile. Thank you. And, and she's saying Nicole is such a great artist and teacher as well. I love all my students. <laughs> and Giovanni is mentioning that uh, a similar mob to this is Tintoretto. By Felicia Feltraco series. Tintoretto? Yeah. Another brand, Italian brand. Mm -hmm. Anna Bra Bracher, Bracher. Uh, also says Nicole is the best teacher ever. I've been her <laughs> student for one year now. Regards from Chile. <laughs> Uh, 
I, I, I feel all the love. Mm. Lau Ferreto, also here. Nicole is a great teacher. I'm very proud to learn with her. Laura from Argentina. Thank you, Lau. Elizabeth, greetings from Mexico. Yeah, now it's a little bit harder because I need to keep this shadow on this side. Yeah, a big shadow to make contrast. So I need to wait my paper and it get more dry. Mm -hmm. iPhone from Angelica. We have Angelica Maria. She says she follows uh, you at in Instagram and we love your art. Greetings from Peru. Thank you. Hola Nicole, eh, estoy desde Chile, Hola. pero voy a hablar en, en inglés. I'm going to speak in English so everybody can hear. Okay. I, I love your artwork because it's so smooth and, and beautiful and so clean. Have you ever tried using the Primatech line? Since I, I don't know is if something you looking for the, that sort of texture or you prefer colors uh, smooth and you know for the type of work you do? I think I love both. I have a, a mixture palette, um, but I think I, I would like the most the, the green ones, the green apatic for the Primatic series. And of course, the, the lunar, lunar blue, lunar black. But in, in flower, I don't use um so much of this color so i prefer the the green ones of the primatic series because i love the granulation for for the leaf mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome Uh, we have a question from Susan Little in Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, she's asking, did you use Bordeaux for your orchids? Yes. Uh, How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I use Bordeaux for my orchids. And, and also... Would you did? Ah, Moon sorry, glow. Continue. I think Moon Glow is one of my secrets for shadows. Uh -huh. She also would like to know when you use granulating and when you prefer non-granulating. Uh, depends. I'm going to speak in Spanish now for this one. Um, depende el modelo de estudio. Por ejemplo, si este tiene una cáscara como una fruta naranja, un avocado... Eh, prefiero la granulación o en las hojas, pero para las flores depende, depende de la textura eh, de la flor, ¿ya? si la flor brilla o la flor se ve como aterciopelada, para las texturas aterciopeladas prefiero los colores granulados, pero si la flor no es aterciopelada, prefiero un color que no sea granulado, entonces depende mucho de la textura real del modelo que, botánico que esté pintando. Mm -hmm. 
So um, she likes to use granulating colors sometimes for like hard shells in a fruit or for leaves. And if the flower has like this velvety appearance, then she also likes the, the granulation. Otherwise, no, she doesn't uh, use the granulating colors if they don't have this velvety appearance. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> Welcome. George Politi says, very good, patient and structured approach. Yes, yeah, it requires so much patience, but it helps. It helped me in my mental health too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a total lifestyle. <laughs> now okay. I'm gonna use a little quinacridone uh, coral for for the red lights. I think this is the only grapes it's perceived like a little more red. So I'm gonna use a, a little coral, coral color in this. Mm -hmm. Um Anandura, Anu Anurada, sorry, Anurada eh, is asking, are you, Nicole, are you lifting highlights while painting along the second layer? If I'm gonna lift in highlights. Yes, like eh, like now, are you lifting the color? Yes. <laughs> Pamela Carrasco. Hi, Nicole, la mejor profesora. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. <laughs> Pamela is also my student. And Carolina and Amelia from Chile also say hi. That's my mom. <laughs> oh. That's my mom and my sister. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> it's the first time she hear me speak in English. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> I think she's thinking, wow, Nicole can speak a little English. Oh. <laughs> and she didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous for my English skills. <laughs> but your English is perfect. Uh, thank you, Angela. I don't have so uh, many opportunities to practice English. Well, there you go. This but, is a wonderful opportunity. What are your next art projects? Uh, Angelica Maria is asking. What is my next project? Um, I think I want to explore more the, the big size uh, on the paper, uh, like a still life painting with more flowers, more fruits. And I think I, I'm going to try uh, Vanitas. I don't know how they call it in, in English, this Banitas? kind of still life, Vanitas. I don't know what that is, Vanitas. Ah, Vanitas es como un subgénero de bodegón en donde además de frutas y verduras se incorpora como elementos eh, que traen a presencia um, la ina inevitable muerte, como velas, relojes de arena entonces creo que quiero explorar también no solamente como la belleza de la flor viva sino que también con elementos más cotidianos que exploren otros temas mm -hmm. so these manitas I didn't know I had never heard this 
uh, term before uh, applied to the still life, but it's like uh, when you uh, use elements that are by definition are going to die, like a candle or um, a, Hello. a sandwich, yes, mm -hmm. uh, or others, no? Que más, por ejemplo? Cráneos, schools. <laughs> Skulls, wow. Skulls, yeah. He's dead already. Uh, <laughs> yes. Can I add something to this? This is yes. Anna from Spain. Yes, it's please, funny. Anna. Hola, hola, Nicole. Eh, um, hola. So I'm going to speak in English so everybody understands, but there's a very funny thing here because still life in Spanish, it is called naturaleza muerta, which translates as death. Yes nature so i think it's yes. funny that you're saying all these skulls and clocks and and candles <laughs> and all these like an altar like for the day of the deaths or something like that and and the translation it's it's kind of a funny game because but i had never like angela i had never heard the word banitas i i it's new to me as well Bonita. but i think it 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 works well with the uh, name play that's all thank you it's lovely your work i really i'm loving it Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. So Anna, we have about three, is saying... three or four minutes left. Um, okay. Uh -huh. I'm gonna. This is the moon glow. I'm gonna finish this shadow. Uh, Christine is saying in English we use vanitas too. Ah, oh, in English is vanitas too. Okay, it's good to know. Mm -hmm. Oh, there and Giovanni is saying natura morta also. So I guess it's also in Italian. Yes, in I Italian. have a book. I buy in Venezia uh, the natura morta. <laughs> completely in Italian. <laughs> in all European languages, Bulgarian, German, French, Russian, there is all, all Natura Mort, which is exactly Natura Morta. <laughs> yeah, Roman language. In the Roman yes. languages, yes. And Giovanni mentions that Vanitas is like Latin for beauty. Latin for beauty. Uh, wow. I don't know that. I don't know. Giovanni and Letizia say that. Diana Ryman says, thank you, Nicole and John. This has been really wonderful to see. I've learned a lot here today. Uh, thank you. I enjoy it a lot. So thank you to all the family of Daniel Smith for inviting me and encourage me too. <laughs> Angelica Maria says, thanks for organizing this session. Hope we can see Nicole in a coming session painting a flower. Ah, I would be very happy. <laughs> see, the, the, the grapes are more uh, fluid. So I was a little nervous today. So I, I think this was a, a really good subject for me, but... I definitely want to paint a, a flower uh, next time. We will definitely have you back. I Thank you, Jan. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, yeah th this was the, the final shadow. I use Moon Glow. 
I love moon glow for the purple or red shadows. Excellent. That's beautiful. Thank you. So, Nicole, will you be able to, um, when you finish, will you post it for us so we can see it, please? Obviously. Okay, great. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. It was great watching you paint. You did such detail. I like how the um, you didn't go over the lines. You were so meticulous. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's like I, I am jumping through through the the lines. <laughs> <laughs> I like that comment. You didn't go over the lines. One of my friends, <laughs> when he was little, a little boy came over to share, and he went and colored outside the lines and she told him to go home. <laughs> not be here if you're going to go over the lines. <laughs> well, thank well, everybody, thank you for joining. Just remember, to, uh, this Sunday is uh, in America, Daylight Savings Time. Yes. So, I know last time we, you know, some, we missed you by an hour. Uh, we do that, that crazy thing twice a year. Um, <laughs> so this Sunday for us, we're going to spring forward. So yep. see you all in our difference next week. So thank you, Nicole. Thank you so very much. You're right. Thank you. Pleasure watching. Pleasure watching you. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.